thinking comes out of a model from Stephen Covey again. And Stephen Covey talks about the circles of influence and the circles of concern. Now, the circles of concern are all those things that impact your world, but you can't do anything about them. So for us on the mountain, these were military decisions, these were government decisions, these were Olympic Committee decisions, there's even things like the weather. These things all impacted my ability to do what I wanted to do, but I couldn't do anything about it. For us back here in Canada, you know, this is the price of the Canadian dollar. This is competition. This is the recession. This is jobs being moved overseas. This is the unemployment rate. These are all things that impact your business, but you individually can't really do a whole lot about them. The circle of influence, this is the place where you have influence. You can do things here, and it starts here with yourself. It's about your personal attitude. It's about how you interact with others, how your team interacts with other teams. It's about where do you place your energy? Where do you place your focus? And so we made a conscious decision to focus on the circle of influence. Have a party. You know, let's have some fun. Let's blow off some steam. Let's make sure that we're communicating and creating a good environment. Now, when you looked around camp, you could see that there were some teams just like us living in that circle of influence. And there were other teams living in that circle of concern. They were arguing with the military. They were fighting with each other. They were fighting with other teams. And you could just see they were not happy. They were permanently grouchy. They, they were you know, going around and getting in skirmishes with other teams. And so it wasn't a, a good environment. Now, when you looked around, you, know, you could see who was in the circle of concern and who was in the circle of influence. And there was a couple of interesting things that happened here. Those teams that were living in the circle of concern, first of all, those people got sick at a pretty high rate. I got to know the base camp doctor pretty well. And he would tell me what teams have got pneumonia, who's got pulmonary edema, who's got the flu. And there was a very close correlation between those teams that were living in the circle of concern and the teams that were getting sick. You know, you've all heard the studies, right? As our stress levels go up, our immune capacity goes down, we become more susceptible to illness and we get sick. That's what was happening to these people right in front of my eyes. Now also, when I look back at this kind of retrospectively, who got to the top and who didn't? Those teams that spent their time in the circle of concern only had about a 9% success rate. So very low success rate because they had spent so much energy and so much time focusing on things that they couldn't change that they didn't have energy left to climb. Now for those teams who are living in the circle of influence, things were very different. One is we were healthy. You know, we're basically breathing the same air. We're living in the same environment. Our tents are 20 feet away from each other and they're sick and we're not. So what's the difference here? It's our stress levels, it's our immune system ability, and because we weren't so stressed out, we could handle the environment more effectively. And when you look at success rates, those teams that lived in the circle of influence had about an 80% success rate. So living in the circle of influence doesn't guarantee you success, but it gives you a much, much greater opportunity for success. So we're very conscious in choosing living in the circle of influence.